Hello and welcome to PCR TV 2018. My name is Jim Nolan. I'm an interventional cardiologist from the United Kingdom. I'm here talking to my colleague Ariel Rogan from Israel. I hope that pronunciation was right, Ariel. So we're going to talk today briefly about radiation exposure in the catheterization laboratory. Ariel, could you kind of outline for us your concerns about radiation exposure, the magnitude of exposure that occurs in the cath lab, how relevant it is to routine daily practice? Hi, Jim. So we have to understand that we are always exposed to radiation, where we are flying or living, especially in mountains. However, we as interventional cardiologists are much more exposed to radiation because of our type of work. We work really touch to the patient and we are doing the procedure. The procedure is involved with radiation. When we have the patient, there is a radiation source that is under the patient. The radiation comes and uh, hits the patient. Then we get the image through the image receptor. So any way that we can find to reduce the radiation to the patient will be beneficial to the patient. And as a result of the exposure to the operator that is coming from the scatter radiation, it's important to reduce both for the operator and the uh, uh, patient. Now, so what are the, the hazards? The radiation exposure to the operator is not from the primary beam. It's exactly, scatter radiation. Exactly. So we have to uh, divide. The radiation to the patient comes from the radiation source, mm -hmm. while the radiation to us comes from the scatter radiation. This is why if we have a very obese patient, we will have more scatter radiation. What are the hazards? from this radiation. The hazards are mainly orthopedic hazards because we are wearing lead aprons all day long and there are some tips and tricks to treat this. Like for example, trying to stand straight or trying to uh, push the paddle in different legs. And there are other diseases like cataracts that are closely related to radiation, especially a type of cataract called posterior subcapsular cataract. So there's a hazard to the eyes? So there is a serious proven hazard to the eyes and it is mandatory to use protective eyeglasses to protect our vision. And, and those protective eyeglasses, do they have to have any specific design features? Well, one of the uh, special things that they should have is to protect on the sides. Okay. So uh, we are not exposed from the sides of the, uh, from the radiation. Another issue is an issue of a, a malignancy. Mm -hmm. this, ty this thing is difficult to prove, uh, but we are exposed to radiation, and we know that this kind of radiation can cause DNA damage. Therefore, we should take all measures to, to try and reduce this radiation exposure. And there is abundant evidence, I think it would be fair to say, that excessive X-ray exposure is clearly and strongly associated with cancer induction, is that correct? Well, it is debatable uh, because it's very difficult to prove a, a something that is so, the incidence is so high, like cancer, mm -hmm. whether it is really increased with our radiation. Oh, right. but, in, but in other groups such as radiation workers, people who are exposed to nuclear accidents? Yes, for sure, if you are exposed to very high uh, radiation exposure, yeah. Uh, like in Chernobyl or in, in Hiroshima, yeah. Nagasaki, it's clearly associated. Yeah. We do not know what's happening in the low level of radiation, ionizing radiation as occurs in the cath lab. And for catheter lab workers, what, what level of exposure is common from an interventional practice well, in, there in terms are, of an annual exposure? There are limits of this radiation exposure. The limits are changing and always being reduced in certain years but we have to take care to be exposed as low as possible. Okay. Mm -hmm. When you think about the magnitude of exposure, you know, um, background radiation, of course, is all around us. We're exposed to 3 to 10 millisieverts, depending on your geographical area. And, and a catheter lab work, and a typical annual exposure for an interventional cardiologist would be a would what be sort a of... a maximum of 10 to 20 yeah. millisieverts. Yeah. So it's quite clear that the catheter lab is a radiation-intense environment. 
and that as operators and workers we're exposed to potentially high doses of x-rays and these can have deleterious effects on the eye, on cancer induction. How can you best protect yourself? Okay. Thank you for this question. There are certain steps that we can take that are really easy and cheap and should be done in every case. First of all, how do we stand in the cath lab? If we stand away from the patient, even one meter, we can reduce significantly the radiation. Another thing is, for example, how we work. If we are using a, a fluoro rate a, of a 15 frames per second and we reduce this to 7.5, this can cut the radiation by 50%. Mm. If we use, instead of cine angiographies, a lot of the new functions of the new devices like store fluoro imaging, we can also reduce the amount of radiation. I don't know if our audience knows, but cine angiography is associated with six to 10 times more radiation than fluoroscopy. Other measures that we can use are less magnifications, that we can uh, simply work in, in, a higher, in lower magnification, or using all kinds of protective devices on top of the patient that can reduce significantly the radiation. For example, in our center, in almost all cases, we put a, a, a simple lead skirt on the patient, and this reduces the radiation uh, to the operator. So, so equipment setup can be important? Shielding options can be important, what, as well as draping the patient. Are there other shielding options? We've talked about uh, lead protection glasses with side uh, uh, protection incorporated. What, what other shielding options are there? So in every cath lab, there should be shielding hung from the ceiling yep. and a, a curtain that comes from below. And this is crucial because, as we said, the radiation source comes from below. So this is why we should form a wall of protection mm -hmm. so we will not uh, be exposed to this yep. radiation. Lead aprons and other personal uh, protection shielding? So we can use uh, thyroid covers, of mm -hmm. course. The lead apron that uh, maybe protects for 95 to 98 percent of the yeah. protection. There are other methods like uh, head covers. Uh, Leg shields, do you think they're useful? Uh, like kind of shin pads? Uh, we can use uh, uh, yeah. pads. With, they, they are reducing radiation to the, to the operator yeah. and uh, not increasing the radiation yeah. to the patient. Uh, an important factor for radiation protection is the inverse square law of radiation reductions. Could you comment on that? Yes. So radiation uh, is lower by a factor of four as you go away like one meter. So yeah. it's crucial not to be standing in the patient, close. especially with the, close to the patient, especially yeah. when you are doing a procedure. If you are able to move half a meter or a meter away yeah. using extension tubing, for example, or if you have a different devices that help you to inject, you do not have to be really close to the source of the radiation. Okay. So there are multiple options available to cath lab workers to manage their radiation exposure. Could you comment on how you monitor your exposure, what measurements you should take, how you should uh, follow them? Okay, so this is a big issue when we give these talks around the world that usually there is a, 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 a in a board, in a corridor, a, a, the numbers of radiation that each of the staff is exposed and really nobody looks at it. So what we suggest to do is uh, have a, an Excel sheet that will e really explain and, and show in a graphic way the amount of radiation that you're exposed to every month. So you will see exactly the amount of radiation that you're exposed to. Yeah. You will see if you are suddenly a jump of radiation and say, OK, what's going on? And try to look at this and also monitor because with good behavior, radiation can be reduced. There are several studies showing yeah that with education, the amount of fluoroscopy, the amount of radiation to the operators can be reduced, and this is helpful, both so you, to the operator and to the patient. So you recommend that the operator takes a close personal interest in their own regular monthly dosages, tracks them, monitors them, looks for spikes, yes. and takes action if there is any adverse changes and a, and, and a kick up in their radiation exposure. Exactly. Yeah. The, the purpose of all this uh, work that we're doing is to treat the patient, but we have to remember that the operator mm -hmm. has to stay healthy mm -hmm. and live for a long time without any orthopedic problems or other issues. So these this are crucial to take these few steps in order to protect ourselves. Do you recommend regular eye examination? Well, 
I think this is mandatory because we hear from time to time on, on young patients, on new patients that are interventional cardiologists that have cataracts. And this is radiation associated. So eye examination in a certain period of time, thyroid function examination and blood test is, are crucial. Okay. Your take home message would be? Well, we have to work, we like our work, we continue working, but still we have to take several measures to keep uh, this, the, the radiation as low as possible and for us to keep working for a long time in a healthy environment. Okay. Thank you, Ariel, for your very helpful and informative comments and goodbye. Thank you very much, Jim.